I didn't want to be running trust accounts and like all of that good stuff. I was like, someone else can do the hard part and I can just show up and market and sell. Cool, man. This is, uh, you took us on a journey here today. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> like I've, I feel like I've been on a roller coaster for the last 20 minutes. So that's good. That's Imagine good. living it. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Road to 10,000. Uh, you got me, Ricky Carruth. You got my guy, Juan Carlos. And today we're talking with, uh, I'm going to butcher this last name. Okay. <laughs> this is Jess. We'll just go by Jess. How do you pronounce that last name? It's Linavel. Linavel. Jess yeah. Linavel. Good to have you on the show. Thanks so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. So what is your claim to fame? What, what has brought you to this moment? What destiny has, you know, swirled around and then all of a sudden, boom, you're right here talking to Ricky and Juan. What's going on? Yeah. I mean, there's a whole story behind it, but um, basically what I do now is I help real estate agents scale from six to seven figures. How in the world do you do that? That is pretty, I would say that's probably an impossible task. <laughs> well, it's not impossible with the right people. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of what we do is, is around creating an inbound lead flow system by creating relationships at scale. And then once they get to a point where they have essentially an unlimited tap of business comes the leverage, the scaling, the automation, the delegation, the team building and that stuff. Phenomenal. Oh, so just what, what you're doing is you're building these systems for them so that they have leads coming in on autopilot. So we're not an agency, we're a mentorship company. So what we do is like, we teach the agent how to be fully self-sufficient. It's kind of the idea of like, we teach them to fish so that we don't have to sell them fish. So everything that we do is geared around teaching them not only how to use organic social media, but also paid traffic to be fully self-sufficient when it comes to the lifeblood of their business. Perfect. So would you consider yourself a real estate coach in that manner? I consider myself a, a real estate mentor. I don't really love the the title of coach because I think that it's a little widely misused. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and and I would say why that, is like, that? Why is that? What's the misusage of it? Um, I think that there's just an element of anybody can call themselves a coach. Anybody can uh, call themselves a mentor, though, right? Yeah, but I do, I define mentor a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So the way that I see a coach is, and, and I think that there's a place for both, for both. Absolutely. But the way that I see a coach is someone who essentially, you know, walks behind you up the mountain, cheers you on, makes sure that you keep putting one step in front of the other. The way that I see a mentor's role is basically you've already climbed the mountain. You've already done it. You have the plan, the systems that like, like the whole thing already done and mapped out. And all you're doing is you're telling that person, like essentially put your feet in the footsteps that I've already laid for you. Got you. Got you. So the mentor has already made it to the top of the mountain, you say? I would say so. And then they're, they're just reaching down to help, help the people up the mountain. Yeah. Whereas a coach starts at the bottom with you, right? Maybe they already climbed in, they came back down or how I'm, I'm, well, I'm, no, I'm trying to understand so, the dynamics. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of people and especially like the, I mean, I'm, I love the coaching industry. I think it's amazing, but I think that there's a lot of people who haven't necessarily had a really successful business that are showing that, that are coaching businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, so I, I, I think that there's also an element of alignment that sometimes can be missing. I know that I've had people who I know very well that have never, you know, have never had a seven figure business, but are, you know, claiming to have all the secrets and tricks to get you to a mm -hmm. seven figure business. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. So going back to your real estate career, tell us mm -hmm. about that. So I started in real estate as like a baby. I was 21. I was straight out of school. I had mm -hmm. no idea what I wanted to do with my life. My mom's been a realtor for 35 years, more than that, maybe now. And she basically said to me, why don't you just get a license and see, I think you'll be good at it. Right. Same way that like most people get into the industry, whether it's when they're young or when they're older, it's somebody says to them, I think you'd be good at it. You're good with people. So, um, I got my license and I think that I kind of got that taste. I, my first deal was a million dollar deal. And so I thought that real estate was going to be easy and that it was always going to be like that. And, um, I kind of got addicted to like, like, like the game a little bit. And I started at a training brokerage that taught a lot of traditional lead generation, you know, things, door knocking, cold calling flyers, billboards, farming, stuff like that. I am especially 21 year old me was incredibly introverted. 
And so the idea of me having to pick up the phone a hundred times a day or knock on people's doors and like pitch myself was my idea of hell. Facebook was this brand new thing. Nobody really knew how to use it properly. And I started actually just prospecting on Facebook. I, I call it now like prospecting in your PJs. Like I got to stay at home and sit on my couch and just, you know, build relationships and give, give people, you know, advice and help and things like that, which turned into clients. So I, that's I make how calls I, in my PJs all the time. <laughs> yeah, I agreed. But I think that there was an element of me wanting to hide behind the screen. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so what, so what was it like? Did you DM people in your market? Were you running Facebook ads? What? So Facebook what did... ads weren't even a thing then. Hmm. So back then it was literally classifieds and a newsfeed. There was like no other part of Facebook. So hmm. I would go into the classified section, people who were like, you know, looking for housing or like things hmm. like that. I would DM them. I would start a conversation. I'd give them some advice. And then, you know, when there was an opening, I would offer I would offer to help them. Beautiful. So what, what year was this when you started real estate? When you were um, 2005, 2004, okay. 2005, okay. somewhere in okay. around there. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. Cool. So you got in, they were saying, go door knock, go knock, go, go call people, you know, go talk to people. And you're like, I don't want to get into that kind of stuff right now. So yeah. I'm going to do this Facebook thing and kind of see where that goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So where do we and go so, from here? You know, I built a solid six figure business. I was still like, I was in my early twenties. Right. So I was, I was definitely not like super business minded at that point. I tried to learn the business from a lot of different angles. I worked for builders. I did resale for a while. I specialized in resort property. I learned the business from a lot of different angles and and then um, probably nine, 10 years ago now, um, I had kind of like a bit, a bit of a shift where I was like, you know, if I'm going to do this and I'm going to stay in this industry, I need to stop kind of messing around. I want to actually see what I can do here. And I want to see whether or not I can really create something that's going to give me a little bit more freedom. And I built... I, I married my, I met my husband who has a marketing background and the two of us essentially made this shift of, okay, you're not a realtor anymore. You're a marketer. And there was a kind of this mindset shift of, instead of looking at yourself as like, I sell homes for a living. It was, you're a marketer and your prime objective is to have more people exposed to you and to provide a really great service that then, you know, creates evangelism after that. We, we started testing a whole bunch of different things. We went outside the industry and started looking outside other service-based industries and what was working. The coaching industry was one of them where we were saying, okay, like what, what has been working in other industries, like real estate for the most part, when it comes to, you know, marketing practices and tech and things like that. So we went outside, we went outside the industry, pulled some things back, really started testing things. And, um, we, we went from essentially nothing to seven figures in six months. And I, I was the of only what? agent selling of no. GCI. Okay. Yeah. And I was the only one selling. So obviously I got incredibly burnt out. And so I, it got to a point where I was like, I can't do this on my, on my own anymore, which is what, which is when the, like the team and the scaling started to come in. I'd built a team before in my, in my mid twenties and I'd done it hundred percent the wrong way. And I ended up kind of being the assistant to everyone else on my team instead of actually the team leader. Cause I was so young and everyone on my team was older than me. I had a lot of experience, but also, but, but also I'd never run a successful team at that point. So again, I went outside the industry, learned a tremendous amount about other teams and how teams were built in other industries and how other businesses were scaled and brought a lot of that back into real estate and scaled my team, I guess, more like a little bit differently than a lot of people do um, within the real estate space. Because I think there, there's, there's one model that I think a lot of people use, which is, you know, you get so, so you get so busy and then, you know, you bring an assistant on and then, you know, th there's kind of like, there's like a typical way that people scale. I did, a, I did it a little bit differently because my skill sets were different. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, that's one of the things that I think makes us a little bit different in terms of the way that we scale things is that we don't have, there's not, a, there's not one set model for how you should scale a team the way that we mm -hmm. teach it. It's very much okay. Like you can be a visionary, you can be an integrator, you can have different skill sets and the team is going to look really different depending on where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are. So we build the team around the person rather than just try to fit the person into a mold. So Jess, so, that's a really, that's a real cool concept. Now, in regards to you now hitting setting fi seven figures, designing this new team infrastructure, where are you at um, and what year? Because I want to know like the time frame of things, but this is really cool how you built the entire thing out. 
Yeah, um, I would say, I mean, we're 2021 now. I would say probably 2012. 2012. And now in 2012, uh, how, how did you design your team specifically being that you are the marketer? Did you bring on agents and then you marketed for them? Were you still taking on listings yourself? Give us that infrastructure just so the audience understands like how you yeah, design so, so for sure. And I, I never separated like buyer agent, listing agent. We always just kind of separated in terms of, okay, if the, if that person has a relationship with you, then you're going to work with them web, like on both ends. Like if they're upsizing, for instance, like we're going to work with them, you're going to work with them on the, on the buying side and the listing side, because that's the relationship there, as opposed to kind of moving people around and passing people off. We found that that worked better for us. Um, it does. That's obviously not the case for a hundred percent of teams. There's definitely teams that we work with that have, you know, the, the team lead runs with the listings. Um, we kind of got to a point where, you know, I was doing a lot more of the like, you know, relationship building, some of the larger, some of the, like, the larger acquisitions for you know, investors, things like that. And my team was doing a little bit more of like the day to day. I started out with me and a marketer. So I was still doing all the administration. I was doing all the selling. And then I had my husband who I originally built the business with as the back end, who was building landing pages and who was doing the lead gen and who was sending out emails and things like that. So if there was something that, you know, even if it was on the fly, I was in the car and I was like, mm, that's a good idea. I wonder if that would work. I could literally just pick up the phone and he'd say, well, I'll get it, I'll get it out and I'll get it running and I'll see if it works. So there was a lot of testing that went in and there was just a lot of creativity that we had space for because we weren't relying on anyone else. It was literally, he could build a, he could build a beautiful landing page in an hour. So it was, it, we were able to move a lot faster than a lot of teams normally can because of him. Um, and then, you know, we, you know, I got to a point where like, I was super burnt out. My phone would ring and I would cry and I would hand him the phone and say, I need you to answer the phone for me. Like I need a minute. Um, and so the first person that I brought on was another agent. It actually wasn't an administrator because I didn't feel, I didn't feel overwhelmed by the paperwork because I'm introverted. I felt overwhelmed with like the people. I just felt like there was too many people. There was, and we, we joke around on my team now that like Jess can only human so much right? We have to like watch how, how much humaning Jess has to do in a day. So, so for me, the right, the right step was to bring on other agents that I could kind of funnel the leads out to, and I could start to more focus on bigger relationships, builder relationships, um, things like that, that we're going to draw that were more like larger scale income generating activities, as opposed to just, you know, obviously servicing the clients really mattered, but um, they were able to kind of do a little bit more of the running around. Perfect. So, so we, so we went from just doing it all to mm -hmm. now just outsourcing the marketing, holding on to the sales and the administrative, and then you outsource some of the sales. So you could focus on the administrative, the relationships, yep. customer relations. Yep. How big did you grow the team up to? Did you have several agents working for you or was it just a couple? We, we kept it pretty small. Um, so at, at the end it was three agents, including me and a, a full-time marketer and a full-time administrator. Phenomenal. And then at the peak, how much were you guys doing in production um, with we that team doing, once it was in place? Yeah, we were doing about 100, 100 to 150 million a year. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then, and then, so are you out, totally out of the sales side of the business at this point? Yeah. What year did you, okay, so you transitioned into this mentor, real estate mentor. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so what year did that happen? Did you start the mentor business before you totally quit real estate? Right. How did you transition into this? How long have you been doing it? And so, mm -hmm. so forth. So I transitioned at the end of 2017. Okay. Um, it, for me, I, and the most common question that I get asked is if you had such a great real estate business, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. um, and the answer was, I wanted to be location independent. Um, I really didn't want to be stuck in one market and yes, I could go away for a month at a time here or there, but I wanted the opportunity. And, and as soon as I started this business, the very first thing that I did is I moved to LA for six months just because I could, it was literally just one of those, like, I got to exercise my freedom here a little bit. Um, so, and it's funny because now like we're, we're back where we started, but we also, because obviously COVID we're, we are still a little bit stuck here. But um, we're looking at, you know, other places that we can move to, whether we do six months here and six months somewhere else. So that was a big part of it. The other part of it was very much, I didn't feel like 
I think it was a little bit of an existential crisis. Like I was like, I don't know that I was put on this planet to sell real estate. Like, I feel like I fell into the industry. I never fully chose it. I love it. But the happiest that I ever was, was when an agent would come and knock on my office door and say, help me. So I think that from a, from, from that standpoint, I personally felt like I'd transitioned out of the business before I physically transi- transitioned out of the business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's good. That's I'm still in transition. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I've, been, I've been transitioning since 2017 myself. I started coaching agents for free. Yeah. I'm still doing it. I'm still selling single agent. I'm still doing a million a year on the sell side, just single mm-hmm. agent, one assistant. And I'm coaching all these agents and stuff. So I'm still trying to figure that part out. So, yeah. I mean, I think you probably just said a, a, like a cold turkey situation. You were just like, I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm going to do something different. I'm going to move yeah. to LA and yeah. figure my life out. Yeah. So no, that's and, cool. And, and Jess, just curious, does the team still operate and run without you being there? Or are you completely just closed down shop? Um, some of the team, some of the team is still together. Cool. Yeah. And, and, do you, and do you own and operate this under your own brokerage or you operate under a different platform? No, I, br- I operated it under another brokerage. I never wanted to be a broker. Um, there's, I f- always felt like there was just, you know, way too much responsibility <laughs> to, to, for, from a brokerage standpoint. I didn't want to be running trust accounts and like all of that good stuff. I was like, someone else can do the hard part and I can just show up and market and sell. Love it. All right. Cool, man. This is, uh, you took us on a journey here today. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> like I've, I feel like I've been on a roller coaster for the last 20 minutes. So that's good. That's Imagine good. living it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. I could tell you some, I could tell you my story and it would, it would be similar. So, yeah. um, well, cool. I mean, okay. So that brings you to today. So yeah. let's just take a brand new agent or a struggling agent, you know, with your mentorship you know, where do we go from here? Like, what would you tell someone, um, you know, who's not where they want to be or brand new, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. what's your advice? Mm -hmm. So the way that we work with brand new agents, because we have a couple of different programs, like our brand new agent program is a hundred percent organic. I don't teach brand new agents ads because a lot of the time, I think what happens is agents will spend too much money before they make money. And they just end up throwing a bunch of spaghetti at the wall to see if something's gonna stick, right? So with a brand new agent, obviously we teach them a lot of organic social media, how to create basically inbound client flow using organic social media by just showing up as an authority. We, we teach three different, um, three different content types in order to build those relationships. And we teach authority content, personal content, and social proof, which for most people will do it and will at least get your sphere and the people around you to not only recognize you as an agent, but also recognize you as someone that can help them, as opposed to just the agent who's like, I got my license and my mom won't use me, right? So there's a certain element of like showing up as an authority and creating value you know there's always that gary v like jab 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 right hook it's the same thing like we always say we you want to give 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 and then ask um so a lot of that is kind of the the new agent stuff with the with with a a business that is existing usually what we would want to do is all the organic mark the organic uh social media stuff as well, because most agents are not using social media particularly well. They're posting just listed, just solds and pictures of staircases and kitchens, right? For the most part, instead how to, of actually- How to cook shrimp etouffee, what color to paint your walls in the fall, <laughs> it's ten, buyer, 10 buyer tips in, in the spring to win the <laughs> <Yeah>. multiple offers. A hundred percent. It's springtime. It's time to clean your gutters, right? So a, a lot of it, we, a lot of the, one of the first things that we do is we'll say, okay, look, you've probably been a generalist for five to 10 years. Now let's actually niche you down so that you can dominate a market segment. We don't niche down in terms of location anymore. We teach niching in terms of demographic or life transition. So, you know, first time buyers, upsizers, downsizers, you know, dog owners and condos, something that's going to, that's going to segment the market down and, and have common or have trends in pains, problems, fears, and desires. So we start with that, figuring out what that, whatever that niche is going to be. Um, and then we market research. So we, we teach them how to actually pull this marketing messaging from the market itself. And the reason why I think that's so important is most 
Most agents think that they can create their marketing in a vacuum and that they already know everything that they need to know. And the truth really is, is most agents actually don't know what is actually driving their clients move moves. Moving's not fun. People don't move because it's just some joyful thing that they want to do. It's actually like quite painful to move. So we need to understand like, you know, just like any other sales, current situation, desired situation. And then like, what does the bridge between the two of those look like? So, um, so it's niche down market research. And then from there, we create a nine point messaging sequence to take that person in an automated way from stranger to client that can be used in social media, in the social media stuff, but it also gets used from like, you know, your front end lead generation ads don't have to be complicated, but once you get someone into your world, the key really is, is, okay, how do we use this psychology so that you don't have to be again, me, not, I, I mean, I got to a point where I love the phone, but I don't want to sit and call people 200 times a day. Right. So how do we use retargeting ads and email campaigns and messenger campaigns and things like that so that you can go out and sell or go golfing or do whatever it is that you're going to do while your while your system is actually converting those people from strangers to clients. Now, now so, just do, do you believe in teaching this to the realtor? So now they become the marketer? Yes. Or do you believe in outsourcing it so that a, co a company or an actual marketer on a salary would do this work for them? So I am a very big believer that you can't outsource well and you can't hire well until you know how to do the basics. Right. So usually what we do is we teach the agent how to do it and run it themselves. And then um, how, how, how to hire someone and bring someone else on how to run that person through the program. Because when, when somebody comes in, into our programs, like we don't charge that person for an admin or a marketer to go through the program with them. Um, so that person would then have someone else on their team that is running it. I mean, I, I really think that, I mean, I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on agencies over the years. And a lot of the time, you know, I knew more than the agency knew or the person who was running my ads, or they were running the same ads in, you know, in Florida as in Texas, as in, you know, Toronto. And so a lot of the time it, you know, the messaging has to be customized to you, to the market and to the demographic that you want to work with. So the messaging has to come from the agent, no matter what the messaging has to come from the agent, the content has to come from the agent has to look and sound like the like the agent. Um, but the actual like tech setup can be run by someone else on your team. Like that's no problem. And the way that we do it is it's once it's set up, it doesn't really need to be touched that much. It's, it's, it's quite automated. The only thing that really would need to get swapped out on a regular basis is your front end lead gen ads, because those obviously those will fatigue. So you can very easily teach someone on your team to swap those out and what works and how to test without it having to be this really complicated rebuild process every time. No, I, I, I love it. I'm, I'm a huge believer in leverage and putting the right people in the right place to help you scale your business. However, if you haven't learned how to do it yourself, it's a little bit hard to identify those prospects as, as good as candidates. So that's yeah. awesome. But Jess, thank you so much for all this valuable info. I have your Instagram pulled up right here. Cool. What's the best way for people to get in, in contact with you? Is it Instagram? Is it email? I would say Instagram or my Facebook group, um, which is just the listings lab method for real estate agents. So yeah. Phenomenal. Cool. Jess, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we are looking forward to uh, having you on the show later in the future. Thank you. And uh, if anyone has any questions, reach out to Jess directly. Uh, she's an expert in automating and helping you scale your real estate business. Thank, thank you. Thank you once again. Thanks so much, guys.